welcome back. Um, we're on again with the recovery truck project. And today's job, it's a Sunday. I've not got much on today. It should be the day of rest, but I'm a little bored. So I've come in the garage to spend a couple hours just to get you know some jobs done uh, so I can move forward. So today, I'm going to go on with making the drive shafts for the recovery truck. Now, there's no right or wrong way out to make drive shafts. You know, everyone has their own way. This is how I do them. I've done them for probably 50 high-powered turbo Clio's with Megan engines. I've done them for, you know, uh, Corsa C's with one point, the, the VXR Corsa engine. I've done them for many different um, applications. In the early days, it was kind of, some would break, some would fail because, you know, I was learning how to do them. But then as I've gone on, you know, I seem to have got this down to a little bit of a, a you know, a fine art <coughs> and it seems to work. Especially nowadays with uh, the Clio boys. I know some of them are running 300 plus horsepower uh, as mainly track cars and they seem to be holding up. But even so, you're still going to need a sample to send off to have a one piece shaft made. So whichever way you do it, you're still going to need this template. You're still going to need to make a shaft so you can send it away to be replicated. So I'm going to go into a bit of detail of how I do it and get these shafts made up today. So this is what I've got. I've got the uh, inner CV joint from the Vector engine with half a shaft. I've got the outer CV joint with the half a shaft off the recovery truck. And I have what I class as a mock-up distance tube. Now what that is, is that's just basically to give you a reference of where the end of the CV should sit. So if you put this together, realistically, that should be you know, flush with that edge of the CV, so there. And then this one should sit flush with that end of the CV. Let's move it over so we can get it a bit more realistic. So that should be about there, and that should be about there. So CV edge, CV edge, edge of the hub, you know, edge of the gearbox. So that's why. The tape is basically for a reference because obviously there's gonna be two of each and I'm gonna need two bars so you know which one matches. So now what I've got to do is I've got to make one of these shafts press into the other one of the shafts. And by pressing into, I mean, you've got to push it into the shaft to the right length, which at the moment with this shaft shouldn't be too bad because this, this side is hollow and this side is solid. So I can turn this down to that internal diameter, obviously clean that up and then press it in so it's the right length, weld round, and then I'll peg through I'll explain a bit more of that later on when I'm doing the, the job. So this shaft shouldn't be too bad. Uh, the only thing that comes to mind with, with, with these drive shafts, which people need to take into consideration, if you look, I don't think you'll be able to see it on this one because I've cut it that rough. They, there's normally like an edge. Let me have a look at the other shaft, see if I can show you a bit better. There we go, so I'll show you better. So if you look at the end of this shaft, there's like probably a three milli, four milli ring all the way around. And what that is, is it's case hardened on the outside. And then the inside's still soft material. So it can make it a bit hard work to machine with. But with the right tools, you can obviously do it. Now, with the, the other shaft, both shafts are solid. So that means we're going to have to bore one and turn the other to make it press. So we're going to go on with this shaft now. And what we're going to do is we need to measure the in and out. So basically, when it sits, the internals of the CV joint are sat bang in the middle. So they're not, you know, bottoming out or, or overstretching. Because obviously, you have in and out play on all the CVs. So you need to work out. Well, that doesn't seem to come in and out, but whatever. That one seems to be solid. So we'll take this. So you need to work out in and out play on the CVs. Get it on the centre line and then measure from, mark your shaft and work out where, you know, the lengths and stuff. I'll show you that in the next procedure. So let's get these CV boots off and I'll start with this, this side and we'll start measuring. Right, so what I've done, I've marked out on the table, hopefully you can see that, 
all the points. And what these points are, are end of the CV joint, then ignore them for the time being, and then this one is the most extended part when it the cups all the way out, put it all the way in, the internal part of the cup. And then what I've done is I've gone from basically the edge where I'm going to take the reference point, which is where the circlip uh, groove sits, which is normally sits flush with the with the CV joint, as you can see, which is that point. So that point to that point is 45 milli. That point to that point must be 45 milli from basically full extension to internal compression. So basically, if I do that, the circlip should be flush with that inside. So that means I need to build the shaft basically starting bang in the middle of there. So when I take my reference point, so let's say this end of the shaft that I'm making needs to sit there because that's where the CV cup goes. And then when I'm machining the shafts, the circlet groove needs to be here because obviously it's in the internal throat of the shaft. So then I need to do on the opposite side. So that basically gives me a measurement from outside to there, circlet to halfway mark. I can do the same on the other one and then I can work out what left, what length this shaft should be. So that there is literally where the circlet should be in the, in the middle throw of that CV cup. So this can be deleted and I can work out the next part of it. So again, we're onto the second shaft to show you what we do. So obviously from this line to this line is the end of the CV joints. You've seen me work out where the circlet needs to sit on this end of the shaft, which is obviously there. Now we need to work out where the circlet needs to sit on this end of the shaft. So I've lined up the end of the CV to that line, or made a line, which is obviously you know parallel. And then I've marked the end of the CV cup, which to be fair, lines up with that groove there. So when I take this CV joint up, that groove needs to sit with that line and then work out where the circlet line needs to be in between these two points. And then it'll give me circlet to circlip and then I can make so I know the shaft needs to be that length so I can machine these parts to make it the exact length that this shaft needs to be so let's get the CV joint off let's clean it all up and then I can work out the exact length it needs to be and we can go from there right so to recap our marks on the table to go through it just to double check so this is the mock-up shaft I did which was end of the hub the beginning of the gearbox so basically the cv ends will sit there so that's what this line and this line represent the, uh, basically end of the cvs have to be that length when the suspension is fully compressed and then obviously as you lift the van up it can move in the angle of the cv joints so that's that's them two ang them two measurements as you've seen so then I've got this line, which if you remember, this one was uh, internal compression, external compression. So we worked out where the CV clip was in comparison to the end of the, the CV. That's where that needs to, the CV clip needs to sit for the purpose of full, full swing on the CV without it bottoming out. So that needs to go on that line, circle it to the line. So then here, is if you remember we're going back to the previous clip is the edge of the cv joint sat on that edge there this ramp so basically that needs to sit there so that means our drive shaft from tip to tip needs to be that, that length so it needs to be so let's just put it up to that line so it needs to be from there To there so between them two lines is how long our drive shaft needs to be when we machine it for the purpose to get the full stretch and the full you know uh, angle swing of the CV joint 
So now what I'm going to do is I'll start machining these two so I can press them both together to make that length. So as it looks, because this is hollow, I'm going to have to trim this down a little bit. So let's say to there. And I'm going to have to turn this edge down to around this length so it can press inside of here and then I can weld around this edge. And that's the beginning of how you work out your dry shaft lens. So let's take that measurement. Let's write that down. I'm not going to tell anyone what that length is for the reason being is, you know, everyone's going to mount their engines differently if they do this conversion. So dry shafts, angles and lengths will definitely be different. But you've got that, you know, the tools of how to do it. If you want to do your own, that's how you do it. And again, same with the other shaft. I'll get on with that. Obviously, I won't film it because I've gone through on this one. So let's get these pieces in the lathe. Let's get this one cut down and let's make a start. And some advice. Obviously, I've just shown a time lapse of me cutting the end of this shaft down, shortening it. Obviously, with it being case hardened, you can't go through with the bandsaw. So you have to use a chop saw. Now, advice from experience, as you see with the slow motion, or the, the time lapse, sorry, I chop a little bit, I take it off. I chop a little bit, I take it off. And it might take 15 minutes to cut through, but what it does is it doesn't generate a load of heat in that shaft. And obviously with it being, you know, material which gets hardened with heat, if you just try and chop through it straight away, it is just going to harden the end where you've cut. So that basically means when you stick it in the lathe to try and machine it, it will not machine. It will be an absolute nightmare because it's rock hard. So just that advice, take your time. There's no rush. Work your way through a little bit of water every now and again, possibly, just to try and keep the temperature, temperature of the shaft end down so you're not having to fight it in the future with your lathe. So this is now ready to press together. So as you can see, as we worked out previously, shaft end, shaft end, whole board, hole turned, right diameter, and so that there needs marking on that uh, shaft there, and then I need to press this shaft into that hole, up to that line, and then weld completely around and fill it all up. I've had to put a little chamfer on this one to make the weld nicer and obviously I've tied up this the ledge to make that a little bit nicer so then let's get this together let's get it pressed and then I should have one piece shaft ready for welding so that's both drive shafts now finished as you can see this one's a bit more closer and a better fit than this one but obviously this one was completely hollow so you know it is what it is so obviously both shafts done now fully circumference weld on both put the pins through each one the pegs and the pins reinforce them, clean them all up, spin them in the grinder, clean them all up and we should be finished and that should be the shafts complete for the Mavano Z19 DTH conversion. So we've got um, Vetra inner splines, the trucks Mavano outer splines. So yeah, let's get them welded, let's get them pegged, let's get them on the truck. So this is where we're up to. It's kind of lightly welded, nothing great, but it's welded together to hold it in place. And then I've milled a hole all the way through. You have to use a carbide cutter due to the case hardening. Otherwise a drill will not go through at all. So now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna machine a piece of bar, which I think is about 10 mil, press it into the hole so it goes all the way through, linish the edges, and then weld these up. And what that does is basically if you've got a piece of bar, I think these are like say 35 mil bars, 
it's got to twist that bar if this weld ever fails, which is going to really struggle. It's like just a bit of, a bit of safety on top of. So let's go and be machining this bar. I'll get it pressed into the hole and then I'll get it welded. Then I'll fully circumference weld these really nice. Clean them all up with it on the um, lathe with the grinder. Then the shafts are completely done. So again, just showing a little bit of detail. We've turned some little pieces of um, mild steel bar and pressed them in. So then now I can weld in there to hold it, weld in there on both sides to hold it, finish these welds off, and then that's the shafts 100% complete. So I'll get all that done now and I'll show you the complete shaft when it's done. So that's now them all finished. They've been welded, they've been linished down, and I've given a bit of a, you know, a bit of black paint just to make them clean. So that's the drive shafts complete. And if you can see, that's the weld on the top of the peg, the weld for the um, the join. So yeah, quite a few they've come out. They're all finished and ready to put on the truck. So that's the drive shaft done. Get them assembled, get the CV joints on the end, get all new CV boots ready to install onto the recovery truck. So that's this video going to end now. I think the next video on the recovery truck is going to be installing the drive shafts, making the boost pipes and uh, putting a bigger intercooler on and looking at the water system. That's going to be the next video. The plan with the truck is, obviously I want to get it up and running, get it moving around and then we can start with a full custom bed and getting it you know some nice little finishing touches on it so thanks for watching like and subscribe see you on the next uh, next job thanks guys